please tell me a little bit about yourself and your involvement in IoT. Certainly, I'm Eric Tran Lee. Uh, I've been involved with data management for 20 years. Microsoft, uh, Windows Networking, uh, energy aware data centers with uh, Oracle and predictive problem management for cloud operation at Oracle. Okay. And recently uh, for pay TV end to end uh, quality of service operation uh, at Locktrust. Oh. And also uh, first robotics as a teacher. So As a so, teacher yeah. in robotics? Mentors, yeah. M mentor type. Nice, yeah. nice. So are you familiar with the term cyber physical systems? Oh, well, I wouldn't say I'm familiar. I would say, you know, Fast data and you know fast data monitoring and packets. Yes, this is yeah, something I'm excellent. familiar with. Can you tell me what is the difference between real-time big data and streaming analytics? Certainly. Uh, let me talk about three things. Uh, you should think about uh, real-time big data and streaming analytics like you know liquid data. I, I know that we're using words a lot uh, that, data. that it is water-driven um, with streamings like flows, but you should True. think about this like liquid data first where you have a lot of streams of those liquid data coming in, okay. coming from almost everywhere, I mean, and, and continuously, nonstop, uh, and actually probably with search of flows of rate and all that. Uh, these are really uh, the type of data we are dealing with. They are unstructured, coming you know, with no end time, unbounded. And that's the reason why the notion of streaming is there. And the notion of big data is mostly because you have to archive, you have to store those data if right. you want to find patterns in the past. Right. So there's kind of segmentation between real-time streaming where you analyze the data in flight, in motion, as they come, and there's also a whole notion as to what you're going to find when they are there at rest, what kind of patterns you're going to find. Uh, so real-time big data is about doing both. Analytics on data in flight and analytics on patterns of data analytics at rest. At the same time? At or? the same time, at the same time. This is very important that it's those two data, two type of data mm. are being computed at the same time. Um, the best use case is you know, real-time threat detections. Uh, okay. As you know, all those advanced persistent threats have been laying out there for years uh, in, in, in the company. So unless you find them out, uh, you know, and you have two years or three years of data retention, and you can find it in the last five seconds and correlate with the most recent activity of an IP address, which is data in fly, mm. at that point, you will probably not detect that there's some, some malicious activities. Okay. Uh, that's why real-time big data uh, in motion is important, because you need to not only analyze the data at rest, but also at the same time correlate it with the data in motion. So what you're saying is you are looking at the data in motion and you're comparing it to the data model at rest. Exactly, with the patterns of the same data at rest. I mean, it's a simple okay. case, right? Okay. I mean, you are logging in uh, as Eric Tran Lee uh, every day, but someone has stolen your password and he's now inside the company and he starts to do you know, activities like logging into the directory. Right, and you're going to see a lot of logging failure. Is it Eric Tran Lee or is it a hacker? That, that you don't know. The only way to know this is to basically observe the behavior of that laptop that happens to be the laptop of Eric Tran Lee and compare it for the past 10 years, which usually Eric probably misses, you know, Fat Finger misses his password two or three times, but right. not 10 times. Right. And certainly not right. looking at the LDAP directory. And that's, that's where the real-time big data in motion becomes important because you have to go back 10 years, baseline it for all those 10 years what's been doing, um, analytically speaking, machine learning speaking, mm -hmm. and then in the recent 10 seconds it's been doing that, you need to detect it and probably put it on, on, on some kind of observation mm -hmm. uh, to go to the next step. Okay, so uh, okay, I think I get what you're saying yeah. then. So you're saying it's not enough, or sometimes it's not enough just to be looking at the stream and making decisions on the stream. You need to be comparing it to something else. And what we're talking about here, the comparison model is going to be in the big data. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. All right. Um, now, what, what, um, can you share maybe like a, a customer use case that would explain this in a little bit more detail? I, I think, yeah, certainly. I mean, the use cases in, in software are always a little bit difficult to, to comprehend. Uh, I would probably use kind of known use cases like fleet management, right? That's uh, and, and it exists for a while now. I mean, you, you want to go and monitor the, 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 the itinerary of your, your fleet of trucks, for example, and you want to be sure that uh, they've been tracked in terms of geolocation, that they're delivering at the right place. But you know, there are problems like the, the half-loaded half truck. Like you don't know if the driver in between has been doing some shopping around. 
Uh, so the thing is, you need to monitor at that point for the same itinerary and your, your kind of fleet of trucks and drivers, what they've been doing for a while and for the past. And you kind of know the, the kind of normal, normalcy around the, that itinerary in the time that they're delivering those, 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 those packages. And if something is an outlier out of this, like a truck all of a sudden mm -hmm. takes longer, then you say, well, something is going wrong. Uh, uh, and and that's, that is really the type of real-time uh, aggregation that you need to do over a temporal space, like, you know, and, and that requires not only data in the, in, in, in the past, but also the recent time, the recent activity that that truck's been doing. Now, so in both those cases, both in the, you know, the network security use case and the telematics mm -hmm. use case, it was anomaly detection. Are there other types of operations that you can do with in, the real, in real time? Certainly. I mean, one of the, the operation is uh, what I would call real-time correlation. Uh, you know, this is where uh, not only you, you do the compute of the average time of that drivers, but you want to check a couple of conditions, like, you know, if he stops, where he stops, mm. uh, what kind of itinerary he may be taking. Uh, so kind of if A, then B, then C. That kind of correlation demands uh, heavy compute, uh, but it's very important because out of those rules, uh, it's about anomaly detection and investigation into the, the, the activity in real time as they come, as the event occurs. And these are, for me, real-time correlation. Um, the other space is real-time temporal analysis. Like you would basically compare a baseline couple of sources coming into the, mm -hmm. uh, your, your, your system. Uh, one could be, uh, the, of course, the itinerary of the truck, the speed of it, but it could be traffic uh, so that you redispatch the truck if there's too much traffic. These are at least two sources that are not connected, but right. still in the temporal window, you need to be sure to optimize the path that you do the right analytics on it. So you need to join them in, in the moment mm -hmm. and basically put out the action by saying reroute that truck. So that, that's the real-time temporal analysis on top of the real-time aggregation that you have to go and do uh, to, to, to optimize the, 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 the fleet, your fleet in terms of dispatching and, and, and routing. Now the correlation again, maybe give me a little bit more detail because it sounds like, is it just saying that this correlates with this? It sounds a little, I guess it is different than anomaly detection, right? Well, anomaly detection usually, again, uh, it's a broad term. So uh, I, I think what I try to say is if you have disconnected sources that have their own time windows mm. and you do a condition that basically requires those two sources to be in the same time window, these are real time correlation analyzers. Got it. Anomaly detection usually would use one source uh, or basically uh, many sources but at, in a repository and you would go in batch and find the anomalies. Uh, this time around is on the in-fly, you need to go and find the anomalies on a couple of sources that are totally disconnected. Okay, no, that makes sense now to mm -hmm. me. Um, now, is this usually happening locally? Is this happening in Cloud, maybe maybe just talk us through kind of where's the actual where's the actual analytics occurring? That's an excellent question. It it all depends. There's two two factors. One is how fast you want to have the actionable insight, and how fast you want to decide to act on it. Real time. Uh, the the notion of real time varies. I mean, it, in some <laughs> some mission critical application is probably under the milliseconds. Yeah. At that point, the real time needs to be onboarding system happening at the device level near near, near the target. What I call targets the, the, the target. Right. But uh, oftentimes it's between five to ten seconds where you need you know heavy computer analytics that cannot be done on the onboarding system first. But secondly, you need the whole fleet of of trucks or so a whole fleet of your onboarding system. At that point, it needs to happen on the cloud. Uh, just because the elasticity of the compute will allow you to basically compute those uh, intensive algorithm, uh, you know, without any capacity issue or right. storage issue. Right, right. Yeah. So can you give our viewers some advice? They are looking at, they, they, they have a use case where they need a quote unquote real-time streaming or analytics uh, solution. What should they be looking for? What are the important, what are the important points when making a buying decision? So two facets of that. If you are um, an application developer, um, you should really understand that architectures matters. There, there's two, two architectures out there, uh, kind of well known in, in the, the open source uh, on the, called Lambda. Uh, one, would, one would be better at finding patterns in the past, uh, mm -hmm. so the, the Hadoop kind of heavy storage sure. HDFS, 
and one would be better at doing streaming data in motion, the sparks of the world and all that. The reality is that those two architecture are very heavy in terms of operational costs and engineering. So if you're starting, uh, you need to pick. You need to pick one, or, but if you pick the two, you need to understand how to sustain it. Right. Now, there are platforms out there that are single platform uh, that would allow you to do both. Uh, and just focus on the business model or the data models to get out of it, yeah. um, to get out you know, to the market. Uh, so you need to pick and choose. I mean, those paths are not equal. And uh, as a startup or as a, an entrepreneur, um, you, know, you need to know where your limits are in terms of, of, of resources to go about that. So what you're saying is, if you're, if you're looking in the past, you're, you're answering questions like, what happened? then you know, you're going to go one architecture. If you're looking in the, in the, in the present, you're saying, what's going on? Then, and then you're saying, if you need both, then maybe you should be taking a look at some solutions that, that can do both? Or the, Totally depending on your go-to market and how fast you want to go to market, I would definitely recommend that you try to choose solutions that are, have a, a cloud service model mm -hmm. ready to go okay. uh, that could run 24 by 7 and deliver those two capabilities okay. uh, 24 by 7. Um, you know, it's, it's, would, that would be my recommendation uh, so that you don't lose too much time and don't have too much hidden cost uh, just to sustain the operation. Or, now, you were mentioning this was advice if you're an application developer. Is there different advice for anyone else or is that pretty much the same so, advice? So, uh, I think the other advice would be for the, 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 the business uh, entrepreneurs. Uh, I think it's important, especially in the IoT space, uh, to, to test things out. I mean, the, the, those business models in IoT are, are kind of work in progress. <laughs> so uh, the faster you go and, and find test beds that you can test your, your, your data streams, uh, the models around the data streams, and the faster you fail uh, and you can recorrect, uh, the better it's going to be. Um, so I think find a platform where you could go and test your model out, mm -hmm. test your data models, your abstraction, and your business model. Uh, test quick at scale. Um, and reconfigured uh, if it doesn't work. Uh, that, would be, that would be my advice um, for, for the business side. Eric, where can people find out more about you and your company? Um, my company website is www.locktrust.com. Okay. Um, we will be part of a couple of trade shows uh, this year, uh, Strata uh, in New York, uh, AWS reInvent, and uh, IoT Santa Clara. Oh, so uh, if you want to go and visit us on our booth, Please be welcome. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you.